Hello, I'm Keith Brown, I'm a woodworker and I'm ashamed to admit that I've never carved a wooden spoon before. So today is the day when I tried to change that and I have a nice piece of beach here. This is an off cut from when I made a draining board commission a few months back. Beach should be a really good choice for this project because I've read that it has some sort of magical antibacterial properties which means it's fine to use in contact with food. I'm in the mood for using some hand tools and I've got a few hours to spare so let's crack on. This is a pretty nice piece of beach, but it does have a couple of imperfections. There's quite a large knot here, but that doesn't go all of the way through to the other side. And I've got a knot in this corner too. What I think I'm going to do is have the handle here and the bowl of the spoon here. First I taped a couple of bits of paper together and created a template for the shape of the spoon. I marked up a centre line just by eye and I thought I'd make the spoon as big as I could, so it'll be kind of a serving spoon, I guess. After marking up a shape onto one half, I cut it out with a knife, and then I could flip it over to mirror the shape onto the other side. I marked up a shape for the profile too. I started cutting the profile first with a coping saw. This took an awfully long time and the temptation of course was just to use the band saw but I stuck with it until eventually breaking the blade in the coping saw. And it was the only blade that I had but I was almost done with the cut, I probably had about 20mm left so I made a relief cut with my Japanese pull saw and then I could knock out the waste with my mallet. And that gave me the space I needed to get in there to cut the remaining part. To clear more of the waste I'd use some chisels with a mallet, with the bevel side of the chisel face down. Here you'll see I'm holding the chisel with the bevel up to clear this piece of straight grain and then I swap back to bevel down to shape the handle. For some of the chisel cuts it was much easier just to take away a little bit at a time with the corner of the chisel like I'm doing here, particularly on the end grain cuts. Next I could start shaping the bowl of the spoon, so I marked up a shape. And I'd use a gouge chisel which I found recently at a car boot sale. I think I paid 50 pence for this, but it didn't look quite like this when I bought it. I'd already spent some time sharpening up the bevel. This was definitely the most enjoyable part of the project. It was great fun watching the spoon start to take shape. I kept the cutting edge sharp just by honing on my leather strop. I think I needed to do this twice while I was carving the spoon, just to keep the edge nice and sharp with a mirror finish so it would cut nice and clean.
I cut mostly with the direction of the grain, but I did a few cross grain cuts too. Here I'm making a rounded scraper using some steel from an old hand saw. I shaped it on the grinding stone and then polished the edge on a 400 grit sanding belt and here I'm trying to hold it as close to 90 degrees as possible. Then I polished the faces on 360 and then 600 grit diamond plates and I did the same with the edges too. Then I burnish the faces and then the edges using my burnisher until I can feel a burr along the edge. I'll leave links to all of the tools I used here in the description box. This scraper worked great. I could have just sanded the bowl of the spoon, that may have been slightly quicker than making a scraper from scratch, but now I have a round scraper which I can use on future projects and scraping leaves a much smoother finish than sanding and it's also quicker and more enjoyable too. Next I used my spoke shave to shape the handle of the spoon. I did a bit of knife carving at the end of the handle. To rough out the shape of the back of the bowl of the spoon, my first thought was to use the hand plane, but that was going quite slow, so I switched to a rasp and that worked much quicker. Once the shape was roughed out, I could use the spoke shave to clean up the cuts and get a nice smooth finish. I did some sanding next at 100 grit. And that was all of the shaping done. For finish, I'd first use some of this mineral oil, which is a food safe oil. I applied one full coat and then kept recoating maybe once or twice until the oil stopped soaking in. And then I used some of my homemade food safe oil wax. This is a blend of mineral oil and natural beeswax and this gave the spoon a nice smooth finish and a nice natural shine too. And it will also offer a bit more protection to the spoon. My homemade oil wax finishes are available for sale on my Etsy store if you're interested. There's also an original blend which is best for projects that aren't in contact with food. And you'll find a link to my Etsy store in the description box below this video. After rubbing in the wax, I immediately rubbed off any excess and buffed it out, and it looked great. I'm really pleased with how this spoon turned out. It looks good, it feels great in the hand. I'm probably not actually going to use it. I'd rather use plastic spoons in the kitchen that can go in the dishwasher, but I will keep it and it'll probably live in the kitchen just as a nice thing to look at. The project took between three and four hours. The most time consuming part was cutting out the waste with the coping saw. And having given that some more thought, what probably would have been quicker would have been to make a series of relief cuts with a hand saw and then chisel out the waste, but that didn't occur to me at the time. I'd be interested to make a similar spoon but with power tools just to see how quickly I could do it in comparison to this one. I reckon I could probably get it done in maybe a third of the time. Maybe I'll try that in future next time I have a suitable piece of wood. That's it for this one. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe if you haven't already for more weekly woodworking videos. And thanks for watching. <laughs>